If you're interested in mobile security, whether you want to become a mobile pen tester or you want to do bug bounty hunting on mobile apps, whatever it is, if you're trying to learn about all that stuff, one thing you probably have run into is you're trying to find different places where you can get some practice. I've gone over a few places you can use for practice in this channel, like Hack the Box Challenges or the OWASP Crack Me's, but I recently just found an Android CTF app and you can download it on GitHub for free and I just thought it was a really cool little self-contained project that covers a lot of different things from an Android security perspective. So in this video, I'm gonna show you where you can download that app and I'm also gonna solve a few of the challenges inside it to get you started. First of all, this app is called Beetlebug and you can find it on GitHub at github.com slash hafiz-ng. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, I apologize. But this is an open source, insecure Android CTF app that was made in 2022. And it's a beginner friendly capture the flag Android application that aims to inspire interest in mobile application security. It is geared toward developers, mobile penetration testers, and bug hunters. I feel like a lot of people that watch this channel probably fall into at least one, if not all of those buckets. And you can download the APK right here, or if you want to build it from source yourself, you can do that as well just by pulling the code from GitHub. And I've already downloaded the APK and I've installed it on my Android emulator. And there are a lot of different challenges in this app in several different categories. And it has a pretty nice little UI you can keep up with like what flags you've already solved. And it gives you a little stats page to keep up with your points. And I thought in this video, I just solved three of the challenges to get you started. If people are interested, I can go back and solve more of them in a later video. But for now, I'm just gonna get started under the hard-coded secrets section. And I'm gonna look at the second challenge, hard coding secrets. Locate hard coded secrets in the application source code. And all the challenges give you a little hint. This one says, find out how sensitive credentials are being stored in plain text without encryption. And there's a promo code to get a 50% discount on this Louis Vuitton backpack. And we need to find that hard coded promo code in the source code of the application. And anytime I need to find something in the source code, which is a very common thing when doing a mobile pen test, I'm gonna take the APK file and I'm gonna open it with JetX. And there are a few different ways you could go about finding something Something like this, but I'm just going to kind of take the shortcut and say, because we're looking for a promo code, I'm gonna to go to the search function and I'm gonna select all of these different sections where I wanna look and I'm going to search for promo. And we see right here, there's a string for Beetle Bug Shop promo code. So I'm going to double click on that. And here we see a promo code that is Beetle1759. So I'm just gonna put that into the app, submit, and we just got a 50% discount and we can purchase the item. And we just solved our first challenge in this app. So as you can see, a lot of these are not difficult. Some of the topics later on can be a little bit more challenging, but the goal is really to just give you an introduction to a lot of these concepts that you would use if you were doing mobile pen testing. And it just kind of gives you a playground to use to try out some of these different tools and techniques. Next, I can look at one of the ones for data storage, and I can take a look at shared preferences, identify where sensitive information is stored within an application. This one gives us a hint that says, find out how sensitive credentials are being stored in plain text and shared shared preferences. So this is a very common thing when testing an Android app. The shared preferences is a location only file system of the Android device. And a lot of applications will end up storing some sensitive data in that shared preferences, like API keys or hard coded credentials. And this is always a good thing to check for whenever you're testing a mobile application. So to check this, we're just going to use ADB. And just as a quick aside, I am using an emulator that is running on my Windows host machine, and I'm accessing it from a guest virtual machine. And I've talked about it before in an earlier video a long time ago, but just as a refresher, Android Studio has a special alias IP address, which is 10.0.2.2, and you can use this 10.0.2.2 address to access it from your guest VM. Also, my VM is running with a NAT network, so both the VM and the emulator are on a 10.0 IP address, so that's why they can talk to each other. But once we have that ADB connection established, we can just run ADB shell, and that drops us into the file system of the Android device, but we have a dollar sign prompt right here. So that means we are not root right now. And I want to be root so I can access everything. And this emulator is rooted. So I'm just going to run su. And now we have that pound sign, which means we are root. And I need to access the files related to this particular application. So I'm just going to go to the slash data slash data directory. And here are all the package names for all the apps that are installed on the device. And this one right here seems to be the package name for the one we're working with. So I'm just going to CD into that directory. And that shared preference directory is the one we need to look at. So once we get in the shared preferences directory, we see four files here. 
Some of them probably aren't actually useful and they're just actual files used by the application, but some of them look pretty interesting. So let's try the user info file. That seems interesting. So this gives us a username and a user token, and it also gives us a flag. So let's try logging in with that username and that user token. Maybe that token is just the password, maybe it's not, and we'll have to find it somewhere else, but let's try it. Okay, login successful. And now we need to enter flag, and I'm going to assume this is the flag we need. Submit. Ooh, incorrect. Interesting. So that's kind of interesting behavior there. When we looked at that user info file, we found the username and the token, and we found a flag, but that flag wasn't the flag we were looking for. But when we run ls on that directory again, we see that there's a new file here that wasn't here before, and this file was clearly generated after submitting our username and password. And when we cut that one, we see a new flag, and copy that, paste it, and we got another flag. So that's actually some interesting behavior that they kind of demonstrated there, where sometimes you might take a look at the shared preference directory and nothing interesting will be there. There won't be any sort of sensitive data or credentials or anything stored there, so you might just move on with your testing and forget about it. But sometimes when using an app, you'll execute some sort of function within the app, and that will trigger something that generates a new file in that shared preferences. And that's why it's important to make sure you're checking the shared preferences and monitoring it for any new files that are created, because sometimes whenever you say log into your account or try to purchase something or whatever it is you're doing in that app, it might generate some sort of new content inside that shared preferences directory. And that's going to be where the actual sensitive data that you need to call out is located. And let's try the info disclosure. Insecure logging. Locate sensitive log info left by developers of the application. So this one says use Android Logcat to identify sensitive log information. And it's asking for a card number and an expiration date and a CVV number. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the ADB logcat. So now I'm getting all these log data from the application. So whenever I like click things, it's generating logs. And I think the idea here is they're probably gonna be storing the credit card number in the log file, which is a problem. You shouldn't be storing sensitive data like that in the logcat. So I'm just going to put in a fake credit card number here and see what comes out in the logcat. And I don't wanna put in a real number, so I'm just going to generate a fake number. And I'm going to click pay and see what happens. Okay, there we see. We see that there was a transaction failed and it actually logged that credit card number. And right underneath that, it's also logging a flag. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that flag, paste it in there, click submit, and we just captured another flag. So I think that's all I want to solve for this video. But if you want to see me solve any of these other categories, let me know and I can make another video. And I encourage anyone who's interested in this kind of stuff to go ahead and download this app, start playing around with it, and see if some of these other categories look interesting to you. Maybe you run into a problem, leave a comment, and maybe I'll make a video solving that later. There's actually some fairly advanced stuff in here that you can get into later on, like the biometric authentication bypass. I think that's a pretty cool one. Binary patching where you actually have to patch the binary to give yourself some additional access but that's gonna be about it for this video again let me know if there are any more of these challenges inside this app you want me to take a look at or if there are other CTF type apps like anything from try hack me or hack the box or any of those kind of things that you want me to take a look at let me know and I'll do my best to get to it <laughs>